So when we start, I'll just give the can a quick shake just to make sure everything's working. You can hear the agitator ball. Press the cap down so you see the paint come out of the proper colour. It starts off as like a clear and then it comes out as the nice shade of tone that the, uh, the paint itself is. And then we just give it a quick test on the canvas here. Just This, this is my separate board. I've got a few different caps here that we can try out to get different effects. So this one's like quite a fat cup. You can see the paint comes out a lot faster, a bigger. You get different lines depending on what you're doing. Sort of a nice soft fat cap, that one. So it comes out relatively slow but quite wide. Take a slightly larger fat cap again. You see the paint comes out much wider now. And you can see these much bigger, wider lines. So we use that to fill in the background so it's a nice big surface area to fill. So we use a nice big cap for that. We start off just in one corner. I'm doing kind of a tie dye effect for the background, so we're just going to mix up some of the colours and blend them together. We call that fading. So I'm just going to work into the canvas with the large cap, fills it in nice and nice and quickly. So you can see I just feather a little bit just to, to prep for the next colour that's going in. Again, same again, we give the can a shake to hear the ball rattle, test it, see the colour comes out smoothly, check it on our spare piece of board or set, separate piece and then we're ready to go, work into the colour. I tilt my wrist a little bit so that the paint catch over the, the colour before. That gives that fade effect so we're not spraying directly onto the canvas. I'm sort of feathering it. And then we just work with the different colours again. Again, each time it's the same process. Give the can a shake, check that it's working properly. And then we just layer it nicely. Nice and soft and feathered. One thing you need to remember when you get Montana Gold is underneath the original cap that comes on them is a little black ring, a little black donut. Remember to take that out before you start. So when you push the can down, it stops the caps from spraying the paint when they're in storage. Um, but just remember to take it out, otherwise when you press the cap down, no paint comes out. A lot of people don't know why. It's because that's stopping the paint. It's just, it's just a protective feature. Once we're happy with the background colours, we've kind of worked into them, we've layered backwards and forwards with the with the sort of big fat cap there. Um, we then take this as a level two skinny cap, so it's kind of nice and soft. Lines come out quite small, as you can see. Um, depending on which way you use the can, go from quite wide to quite small. And if you put very little pressure on the side of the cap as you press it, you get these tiny skinny little lines. And we use that now to sketch up the illustration. Um, this is kind of like the base coat. This is the equivalent of using a pencil to draw something that you then kind of later use colouring pens, or whatever. This is this is just creates the shape, uh, the background ready for us to then put the fill in colours over the top. So once we're happy with the basic look of how the canvas is going to be, illustration, we've done all the sketch up lines, we then start going in with the colours that we actually want to use for the main body of the painting. Um, and the idea here is that we cover over completely the lines that we've used, they're just a basic, they can be in any colour, it's just a, just a guide, almost like a paint by numbers, um, and then I'll just fill in the basic shapes with the flat colours and then afterwards we'll go over then with the other little colours to give sort of fades and highlights and shades. Um, but at this stage it's just, again, we can just use the standards soft cap.
once you're happy with all the fill colours, you're happy with the base layers, um, we then do the outline. This is what's going to make the illustration pop and define the actual image. Um, so for the case of this, I'm going to use a black. Um, now, I've used a level 1 soft cap here, so it's kind of giving me a nice thin line, but you can use any cap within reason. Um, you can use the cap that comes in the can, the little gold ones. It's absolutely fine. Uh, just remember, try not to use the sort of big fat caps. You're going to get massive lines, and it might wreck what you're doing. It's the, the softer the cap, the, the more forgiving it is. And all we do is we just trace back those original SketchUp lines that we drew. You're just basically going back over again to outline everything, and that's what gives you the, the final shape. We can add in any of the little shadows, any of the 3Ds, as you can see as I go along. All of my shadows tend to fall to the bottom left, um, so you'll see underneath the sort of lower and left of each part of the, the illustration there's a little bit of shadow I've added uh, and you can see that as I go along here. With the paint it's, it's uh, very opaque and it dries quickly so if I want to tidy up any of the colour that was underneath, I want to thin out the black lines or anything like that, we do what we call a cut back and basically we just take the colour that's underneath and cut it back over the colour we've just put on. So in this case the black outline, I've just cut the red on the scissors just to thin out that black line. I wasn't really happy with my line work there and I do the same with the yellow on the hand um, and any little bits that I'm just not happy with I can just thin the line out a little bit. Um, and we use it just to sharpen things up and just, just make any, any tidying, tidying up on the painting, to be honest. So now we've come to put the stencil on, which is going to make the text look nice on the bottom of the image. We're going to use a little bit of masking tape, so it's nice and low tack, it won't damage the painting too much. Um, if it's the paint's still a little bit wet, we can always tidy that up at the end. Um, we'll just peel a little bit off, and then low tack the text up so and make sure it's straight, and then we're ready to use the stencil. Then we'll pick the colours, so we're we'll going with a nice soft white just to start with. We'll take the standard cap that comes with the can, so it gives that nice sort of fuzzy soft line. Uh, we don't want to sort of fill in too much paint here, you want to be quite light and gentle. Make sure the colour's working properly. Test it, we're happy with it. And we just go from not too far away, we just kind of softly almost float the paint onto the sensor. We don't sort of fully spray it in because otherwise it builds up too much and it will drip and bleed behind the sensor. So we're just nice and careful and soft with it. Just to give it a little bit more of a, a pop on this painting we're going to add some other colours in. So we can do like we did the fading in the background. So we're just going to do it nice and gently with the fading on the letters. Just fill in the shape as we did before. 